Today we are going to continue work for this insanely cute otter here and um, how we are going to get there and what we are doing exactly you are going to find out in this video. So stick with me and let's go. Alright, welcome to the next episode of our realistic habitats. This is the second part of the small clawed otter habitat. And if you have seen the first one, you know that this is a uh, build that I have uh, previously made a concept out of. Um, and this one is uh, very specific because I um, I had a I had an idea in mind for small clawed otters for a long, long time already um, than I made before the wetlands pack was announced. Um, I made this uh, concept art and, you know, um, at the end, um, um, I really love the fact how close we will be at the end of this build. Um, I'm gonna say ahead of time that the outside of this entire habitat is 99% done at the end of this episode, uh, meaning we are going to have a rather rather long uh, real-time part to be honest um, and the next episode like the third of uh, this one is going to be very special because we are going to build for the first time ever an entire speed build out of the new explore mode cam uh, that said we are going to focus solely on the uh, interior part of this habitat and this is going to be challenging but at the same time very exciting to see how that turns out because um, especially the camera movement should be a lot more enjoyable in a speed build i'm very curious to see how that turns out um, but that should not be part of today's episode. Today's episode is all about making sure everything looks nice inside of that region. You can see I'm doing one specific thing over here and oh boy, that took time. Now, I used the four by four meter billboard and the thing I did over here is I used my cobble texture that I created myself out of the in-game um, egg props that we had from I think 1.8 update was the one where we got them um, and I created like a little floor pattern out of these like there are a couple of issues here but I think I'm um, at the end we we went with the best solution for performance and visuals um, so I could have like easily taken uh, my cobble wall and the performance for a one-off build would have been totally fine um, on medium to high-end computers. The problem about this is um, you always have to ask yourself between <laughs> But between the looks of a very specific detailed little area and the overall use for the entire build. And you've potentially seen that already from some of the screens uh, or frames now. The texture underground just looks fine. Like if you briefly look at it, it looks like a proper cobblestone ground. And I wanted to have this pebbles cobblestone um, look and feel in this uh, small clot auto habitat. I have seen so many habitats that use it. I wanted to have it. And also I wanted to have full control over the depth of this because I wanted to make sure to make it as shallow as possible. So what I did is I used the camera. Um, I put it exactly in the middle above the texture, made a photo of it, put it in Photoshop, created a, a bit more of a um, contrasty texture out of it and then re-imported the texture with the 4x4 billboard so we could use this wonderful cobble texture as you can see right now. And what I did then is I took the actual cobble pieces made out of the eggs um, and took a couple of those. Um, still, we are talking about 10,000 pieces, by the way, um, but not 150,000 pieces, which would have been the other idea. So I improved the overall piece amount by uh, a couple of hundreds of percent <laughs> so that was a, at least a good uh, a good way of doing it and um, I think the looks is good I made some of these poking out of the texture and so it looks like um, the ground is actually 3d even though most of it is just a flat 2d texture um, which leads me to a little thing that um, I wish we could have at one point in Planet Zoo. Like the graphics and stuff are brilliant. Um, and a lot of things that we guys do, um, especially with detailed builds, um, uh, is all about, well, depth. Um, and depth is created by little shadows and just making things look a lot more plastic, if you will. Um, and I'm not speaking about plastic plastic, but I mean like the tangible. You have really the feeling that there is a um, height map to it. And height maps is eventually exactly what I was uh, referring to. In 3D modeling, there is a beautiful little thing called tessellation. Um, or it's not, it's not really modeling. It's basically a technology by graphics manufacturers that made possible to save 
a tremendous amount of polygons um, of 3D models. Um, tessellation is kind of a shading, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to explain that 100% perfect here, but uh, it's kind of a shading mechanic in which um, a uh, system takes the basic texture and underlying is a information texture that gives you the information which part of the image should be raised or lowered. Um, you have to imagine that with a black and white image and the, the darker, the more black an area appears, the higher it is and the more white it is, the flatter it is or vice versa. It depends a little bit on how you set up the whole thing. Um, but so you create a so-called height map. Um, City Skylines had this for a while that you could import height maps exactly with this technology or with this technique, I should say. Um, but in, in modeling, this is a, a common feature to do. Um, it, previously, there's also another way of doing it called bump mapping in which it was not with white and black this was more like a it's like a very pinkish texture if you look at it and then again the different color variants uh, gave away the information about the bump so-called bump in the texture um, and the cool bit about this is that this is all created by the system and not by polygons so um, you could make walls and stuff really have bricks popping out of the the brick wall um, rather than building each individual brick but it looks so much better that people just always tend to do that and if you look how lighter or haribo are building and so also even sometimes um, they use a ridiculous amount of pieces just to make exactly this effect which could be made super simple with tessellation and um, the, the reason why i'm talking so much about this is that this tessellation would make the overall experience of textures and stuff so much better in this game without actually having problems with the traversable area and stuff. So I really hope that at one point that will be possible. The only issue is um, the game does not feature these height map informations uh, as a default. So that would mean Frontier would need to do all of those, even though I think they have it because some of the pieces do have a pretty damn good uh, texturing and do have a certain kind of tessellation it's not exactly tessellation but at least it looks like bump mapping from a certain perspective um, so i'm not a professional in this i'm not exactly sure how they do this but that would be amazing but now let's talk about this habitat in the last couple of minutes um i intentionally talked about this topic because i found this a bit more interesting but one thing that is more interesting as well is how i use the decals over here um, and and the moment we got details, I knew it's going to be amazing, but the longer you play with them, the more ideas come to your mind. And you can see I use them to make sure that this um, overall line uh, in which the sand is going to tumble across the area of uh, the water, uh, it looks a lot more realistic and it looks like the sand is actually dipping over a little bit here and there. So the edge is not like super flat or super sharp. It's very natural. Um, so I use some of the dirt details about this. And then I also use the grunge details to make everything areas appear wet, um, which they would be, you know, and so this is something uh, that adds so much to the game that you would not notice once you don't have it. Um, so if you would compare this habitat with and without um, details, in the first split second you mine, may not notice that, but after a couple of minutes it, it just feels so much more natural when you have all the textures. And that said, this is also something for the third episode. There are so many decals still missing. The whole building is just looking perfectly fine at this point and it needs to look a bit more weathered and stuff. Um, but I wanted to try this at least with the waterline, um, make it look really realistic that way and i think it just really really worked out super well and then you know i'm just doing the basic stuff now over here and since this is a realistic build i'm not going too crazy here with the gardening and stuff because again the focus is on the habitat itself and i then decided to make everything else um very functional you know there is a lot less uh, detailing a lot less different pieces, just slipping down a fence, doing a bit of textures, you know, making sure that things um, are the way they should be, and then just putting down a couple of fence lines here and there using always the same piece, make things simple um, as it would be in a realistic build rather than having everything super crazy. And then just use some foliage here and there. Um, didn't make it too tidy because, again, uh, this would be part of the rest of the zoo. And so, yeah, we ended up having this. I used a couple again, it just works too well in certain areas, so I'm just using using that here and there. Um, and that's about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this time lapse so far. We are just doing some little things here and there now before we jump over in the real time part. And I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah.
that's all I can talk about. Oh, wait, no, there's one more thing I need to quickly address. Um, if you have maybe mentioned, uh, may, uh, maybe uh, noticed, the comment of the episode is missing at this point. Um, there are a couple of reasons to it, which I'm going to talk about in the future. Uh, I, I have better ideas of making an in involvement for you guys. Um, so uh, something similar will basically come back soon. Um, I did not forget about that in case you were wondering. So keep commenting, okay? <laughs> Sorry, let's jump over into the real-time part. All right, here we are in the real-time part, and we are standing right in front of a uh, weird tree. We are not in here, but you can see this is the habitat area from outside of the underground view or the underwater viewing. And um, I wanted to quickly start the tour uh, with the other side of it and um, just give you a little bit of an idea how the whole situation here with uh, the incline and decline of landscaping really worked wonders for the habitat to be interesting, but then again also very nicely integrated into this overall area. I think you can see that very well here with um, this positioning of the wonderful little bench over here. So you're sitting right in front of the tree, which is ground level to the zoo. If we turn around, you know, this is ground level. Um, and then the bridges and stuff, it really has this wonderful little... Um, yeah, kind of curved shape to it, but it feels very organic. It's not like super crazy incline because these animals don't really want to climb uh, too crazy uh, steep. And so that is why this was needed. And um, still, you have got a very interesting way of moving in here as a guest. Now, before we go here, a little bit of a, um, you know, tour to the right hand side. Don't mind the flying camera and stuff. This is what I used for the texture as, uh, you know, described in the um, in a speed build, a couple of things that I still need to do with it. There's also even more coming in the future, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But um, yeah, here we go. This is the uh, this is a little uh, information board about the inside view of this area. Um, so this is just a very little area for the others. There's one lying down here, as you can see, chilling in here. They've got a little a little puddle, more or less, in here in which they can you know just play a little. Uh, it's not like gigantic. Um, the focus is on the outside area, obviously. But um, given if there's like super bad weather they still have an inside area in which they can play a little at least do some do some swimming and stuff you know that is um, the idea and I will actually do a little bit of a fake tunnel that t theoretically would connect the inside and outside so that they could uh, use the winter time to heat in the water and then the otters can swim in and out uh, via this area um, this is something I'm going to do yeah, I need to also put down some images and stuff, but um, this is all we got at the moment. And if we go and sneak uh, up this little edge here, you can see this is the backstage area. There's a keeper coming out of the habitat now, and we're going to make the inside first before we then go to the outside. So this is the interior, and yet again, um, there is not everything done. Um, there is a lack of decals, there's a lack of details, but I will admit that I kept this for another episode for the sole reason and sole purpose that this will be my first build which is going to be from this camera mode. We are now in the explore camera and we can now finally build from this position and I will make use of that. I will make use of this camera possibility with lowering and raising and stuff, you know, making sure that we do a superbly detailed interior area here with a lot of little details. That said though, I'm not going to make uh, stuff that is behind this wall. This is again just like a little fake area in which they could have some boxes in which they can sleep, you know. Um, this is like a very very private area for the otters to, to relax in. And then here to the back we have like another gate. This is where the, where the big slide is positioned. Um, so you can see over here this is where the, the water slide goes into the habitat. They basically never use that but you know as a feature I quite like that. But um, this is another sliding door which is not yet done so that you could close off and keep open. But I'm now moving back to the beginning just to show you how cool that works. Now no matter which side you're picking to go first. I will actually take the left hand side. Um, you are going down a little bit to go a bit of the below water level and then you have like a wonderful look at the otters diving down here and as you as you come over here you just go below uh, above water level again and you can see them um, swimming across here and you can see them playing in the water. I 
it decided to do that to fake the depth of it a little bit more uh, with perspective. Now, we all know that um, it is still ridiculous how much space they need underwater to be diving. This is again the, the least um, deep I could do, like legit if I move the billboards a tiny bit higher they can't dive anymore. You've seen that potentially in the in the speed build how much I was testing that. But yeah, so this is unfortunately what happens. Um, and I did a, a couple of tricks down here to make it appear a lot more 3D than it really is. You can see some of the cobbles poking out of the out of the displays. But I think this is the best solution um, without you know destroying the performance. And since this is the same texture and the water plays wonders, you can see this is the texture of the the, the pathway. This is the billboard, and it just looks identical uh, with the lighting and stuff. Uh, it was a huge work to find the right lighting, to be honest, in Photoshop uh, to make sure that those two merge perfectly together. Um, so yeah, this is what you get out of it. Um, it's a kind of a nice little, um, yeah, how, how do you call that? It's a nice little addition um, to this overall thing. And the fun fact is that this is the cobble texture that Frontier gives us, and that is in fact not the cobble texture Frontier gives us, but this is the cobble I made and then made a photo out of. And for whatever reason, this matches better than the cobble photo. It's weird, but it works, so just take it as it is, you know? <laughs> so I'm just, you know, that's what I need to say. Um, and yeah, this is, this is then the otter area. And imagine you're a kid, you have this insane view uh, below water. You know, that's kind of cool, to be honest. You, you're just like small and you can watch them swimming and diving and you're like almost eye level with these cute little otters. Then you're bigger and you see it from this perspective and given you have eaten a lot of vegetables as a kid and grew uh, and you've grown pretty nice, then you're like this tall and you still have a wonderful view of this area. In fact, potentially you're not this tall unless you're Dirk Nowitzki or something. Um, but yeah, so this is um, how you experience this area. And once you go around over here, you get a proper view of the slide that this otter is taking the wrong way, but um, it, you can see it works, which is kind of neat. It's just running up the slide, okay. But um, yeah, I think this is really, it really worked out superbly well and you can see dipping below this thing really makes sense I supported that correctly now so it all makes sense and doesn't seem out of place um, I put some fences in used the rock here and there honestly the cobble is just fantastic it just works so well um, and yeah this is it um, I will put this on the workshop already even though uh, it's not finished but um, I thought you know what I'm just going to upload the entire park for you guys so do with it what you want um, you can check it out and I'm just going to you know make sure that this otter habitat is in the center of uh, yeah the whole thing and um, you can see I, I use some little mesh fences here and there just to make sure that I theoretically can't escape I mean they can either way not escape in game because the traversable area as I can really quickly show you does not allow them to escape but realistically you know they could walk down here and so I put these little fences in um, but in fact as I as I found out they are not really the biggest climbers of the world like they can climb but they eventually would never jump down here um, specifically not when a lot of guests are around and um, I you know I assume that we would have some um, kind of wooden pieces that you would stick in in between here and also the slide so that they can't use the stuff when you know the, the zoo is not opened um, so that would keep them within the habitat so in terms of realism I think that is covered um, and yeah I think the overall look of the habitat um, really really matches now the concept art and oh boy am I happy with how that turned out I think it's a very beautiful habitat I think it's super realistic in terms of the layout it has a huge space for them even though the in-game values do not match that but this is because I went crazy with all of the foliage and so on um, I love the fact how they're like all diving in here in the water just playing around with the different toys and stuff and I'm just like super, super happy. Um, I'm also happy that Frontier fixed all of the traversable area issues we had. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just, there's not really that much more I can say um, other than I'm uh, very happy uh, with the end result. And I hope you guys are too. There is something new on the channel if you potentially have noticed that. Um, finally, every YouTuber in this world has access to a new function, which is called Super Thanks, um, which enables you to donate money once um, and I'm just going to quickly explain that because when I found out about that function I was pretty hyped about this because um 
this is something I wanted to use for a while now since I'm very used to it from, from Twitch, you know, with Twitch donations and stuff. Um, so in, there are so many people out there that keep writing me, they want to support me, but they don't know how, they don't want to do a monthly subscription, which I can totally understand because we all have 1.7 million monthly subscriptions. So one-off things are pretty cool. And um, maybe you have followed me for a while and you know that I have tried Patreon at some point and I've tried other things at one point. I never felt this, it, it never really came off to me as, as something that w would be good for you and for me, even though I could have benefited from all of that, but you know, I'm doing good and it's all fine, but um, I think this integrated function really makes a lot of sense because it enables you to just donate, let's say, two euros or two dollars once, just one single time. And that's it. You, you, you did something, you supported that, you liked the video, so you can donate, and then it's, it's good, you know? There is no monthly subscription, there's no hidden anything, and the creator benefits from that. So I'm a big fan of that, and I will specifically do this myself for a lot of tutorials that I benefited from in the past a lot, and give the people a little bit of a thanks that way. I think it's a cool idea and I love the fact that YouTube finally has, um, you know, unlocked that for everyone. Just to give you an idea in case you were wondering about this button and this is by any means uh, a demand or uh, anything, I just wanted to let you know that it is there. Um, everything else? Um yeah, we're done for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, keep your eyes on the channel. There's coming a lot of new stuff in the coming weeks. Prehistoric Kingdom series and lots of other stuff are planned. So I'm very hyped about the next coming weeks. Hope you guys are doing great. And I'm going to talk to you in the next one. Stay safe and goodbye.